friends, thanks for watching. This is Winning Wellness and my name is Andrika Kokliat. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, under um, and um, also YStamp under My Post Traumatic Growth. That's M-Y-P-O-S-T Traumatic, T-R-A-U-M-A-T-I-C Growth, G-R-O-W-T-H dot com. And, or actually just, um, those that phrase my post traumatic growth under uh, Facebook and um, YouTube and Y stamp. <clears throat> so I just wanted to do a quick piece about um, uh, God and uh, and and then I'll share a little bit more about um, what I'm planning for in the future. So, um, something that I find pretty important and helpful is um, like to decide that I am worthy of God. And I think other people too um, could benefit from feeling like God, um, believing that God loves you and that you're equally important to other people and, um, and that God loves us perfectly. Um, and uh, I saw this prayer in this book, <clears throat> Seven Steps Towards God, and it's by Bill Beatty. Uh, the last name is B-E-A-T-T-Y. And there's a prayer in it. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. Yet I accept your choice to love me. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that your word is true, Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you love me, Lord, I accept your love. And I think this is a good um, thing to, to really dwell on and and um, almost like master, um, like to really believe that uh, God is, uh, God loves us. And um, when, when, and something that I've been elaborating on in my videos is that basically there's, that there's a choice. There's either um, good or evil. And I used to believe that there was neutral, you know, that if I was just a meditator and a good person, that I would um, enter into the kingdom. And uh, the more I've learned, um, like just even observing the news, <clears throat> observing how, how the world um, behaves, is unfolding, <clears throat> And how even good people don't do anything often. Um, I mean, they may save the whales, but then um, it seems like when adult people are neglected, um, that that to me, I feel like is, is an indicative that we're really in a fallen world. Uh, people may talk uh, about bad things a president is doing. People may talk about concerns about the environment or, um, you know, work at a like volunteer at a pet shelter but uh I, I do feel like a lot of a lot of um adult human beings uh tend to fall under the bus and so there was this other bible uh it was like this athlete's bible that i came across that had some interesting information so um but first i, I just want to make sure to be clear that when um so when there's good and evil, um, that means that we have to choose sides and sides. And so, so um, um, with that, uh, like because our Almighty God is a consensual God, uh, He will, wants us to to decide. And so, a lot of people have because we're all so smart um, and we think we know better and because of history, um, we we tend to reject um, God or um, Jesus um, or the whole Judeo-Christian paradigm. And I want to like link to what uh, a friend of mine he he made a he did a he and his father created this presentation. Pardon me. It was called the or it still is called the Skywalker paradigm. And uh, like my lighting got messed up there. 
And so the Skywalker paradigm was uh, that um, the, who we thought were the hero was was actually the the um, the the enemy or the villain, and who we thought was the villain was the hero. That was like the first iteration of the Skywalker paradigm, amongst other things, and uh, that is influencing somewhat of where I'm coming from, um, because I mean, we we all agree that there's evil running rampant, um, that evil has um, you know been the cause of wars and um, unfair illness or injury or pestilences or whatever, um, you know, people dying early and horrible accidents. And I mean, of course, God makes whatever situation, like, like a lot of times we always hear stories about uh, something really bad happening and, and God helping them through the loss or trauma. And I'm not saying this happens to everybody, but Anyway, um, so uh, getting back to, um, so there's good and evil and you have to decide. You have to decide, do, do you wanna, um, wanna be with Jesus or do you wanna be with his adversary? And um, what I'm trying to say is not not everything we assume, like if you're a progressive liberal and or an atheist uh, or or whatever, um, if you, if you have this automatic negative uh, thought about the Judeo-Christian history, or um, I mean, of course, the Judeo-Christian history is crazy and, and messed up because humans are crazy and messed up. But if you have um, a negative stereotype about Almighty God. That's what I kind of want to um, bring up as possible, like a possible, uh, almost like programming or even psychological ops, you know, if I can borrow a uh, term from the conspiracy um, reality realm. Uh, in, in, so it seems to me that um, <clears throat> evil has um, made it so that it's, it's in disguise and um, most people don't believe that evil is real, you know, and that, that there's a Satan or whatever. And I didn't until maybe like a year and a year and a half ago, because <clears throat> all of my um, <clears throat> new age beliefs and meditation, everything was, was just basically, oh, you know, everything's benign <clears throat> and anything bad is just mistaken you know it's just just a case of, of m mistakes and you know poor nutrition or whatever and uh, while I'm very uh, into um, people getting good nutrition and and that includes uh, anybody who has like you know behavioral destructive behavioral you know things like they should get medical care because that it could be some sort of brain issue or whatever um but my point is is that evil is real and at least that that has been made apparent to me and <clears throat> and as a result if evil is real then um then what's its counterpart and what all what also kind of made it more clear to me is just if you look at uh, public figures, you know, major media, um, celebrities, uh, or, you know, presidents or kings and queens, um, musicians, everybody's doing what's considered like a Freemasonic secret society hand signs. And so it's the okay symbol. Um, they'll do like a triangle make a triangle with their hands, um, they'll cover, you'll see a lot of advertising, you know, from like, you know, Steve Jobs to Bill Gates to whoever, um, Stephen King, uh, they'll do, they'll cover one eye. And that's another big thing. I mean, if we look at the dollar bill, you'll see a pyramid 
with an, a single eye, and it's like the eye of Sauron, you know, J A J R O R Tolkien, right there. Um, you know, like like that's probably what Tolkien was talking about, the eye, the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati. And so, so I just keep trying to um, just bring this up that um, there's good and evil, and um, evil is real, and evil seems to also m refer to the Bible a lot. Um, that's something I've noticed in watching uh, or uh, <clears throat> listening to popular music, um, rock music, and uh, metal, uh, and whatever. I mean, you'll there's there's a lot of um, just a couple lines from the Bible or album covers seem to have biblical references or lyrics, um, band names, um, song names, um, just quite a lot uh, for popular music. And so I just feel like if, um, if, if people who are participating in secret societies are referring to the Bible in not the most, um, not the good parts of the Bible, like, um, and, and, and there's not enough time in this video to to explain, but um, if you want to know more, uh, look at my feng shui page or my page. It's called uh, um, bad marketing. I think it's called like uh, bad marketing, bad feng shui. Oh, I can't remember, but it's a. Uh, I have a Facebook page dedicated to <clears throat> the bad feng shui, like of of marketing. Um, so if you just type in like bad feng shui marketing, um, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll probably find my page <clears throat> and I have all the examples of these. I just don't want to do them on this, um, broadcast. Uh, so, um, so being that there, there, it seems to me that there's evil and they seem to refer to the Bible a lot and they seem to be um and antagonistic to Jesus and, and the fact that evil has um, disguised itself so well and also <clears throat> programmed us to uh, be mad or um, skeptical of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit it's just like such a um, well executed plan and so I feel inspired that we really need to Take a second look at our assumptions at perhaps our most deeply held belief. And the reason why is because uh, there's supernatural warfare going on. I mean, it's not just like, oh, there's good and bad, and it means nothing to me. No, um, like evil wants is targeting everybody, and it wants everybody to suffer. It wants to take away people's well being and their blessings, and um, of course, the their eternity because everything does remain um, like all souls remain alive and um, <clears throat> the ones that uh, choose to to side with Lord Jesus Christ get to remain alive eternally in heaven and those who refuse to believe in Lord Jesus Christ re refuse to put their um, soul in the care of Lord Jesus Christ they get to um, be with the opposition forever. So it's not like you just die. It's, it's um, there's there's a lot at stake for eternity. So um, in a Bible I read, there was an interesting um, um, kind of overview of when you do decide to believe in Jesus and. Um, it seems to me like a lot of churches and a lot of Christians uh, tend to think that there's this old ritual that you got to do. And um, and I actually prefer calling myself a believer, like uh, maybe if I'm going to be more specific, I'll call myself a Bible believer or a King James Version, uh, authorized King James Version Bible believer. Um, because I, uh, but anyways, that makes no difference, but so, um, from what I understand, it's like you choose to be with Jesus. You choose to um, be, take refuge in Jesus, and 
um, in it in in order and the reason why you want <clears throat> to do this is because there's supernatural warfare and you have to declare affiliation with one kingdom or the other so the earth is basically Satan's kingdom and you know like anything that's not like Jesus's kingdom is Satan's kingdom and so this world worldliness material things is Satan Satan's kingdom so um so you choose <clears throat> you know as a being with free will you choose which kingdom you want to be in and then when you make allegiance to whichever kingdom then you get you're under their protection so uh and it's important to be under their protection because there's supernatural warfare going on so um and we are saved by the grace of god so almighty god um sent his his only begotten son to the earth because he wanted us to be free he wanted us to have a chance uh, of eternity with him rather than automatically just um going to the opposite side and so anyways, um, so, and it seems like a lot of Christians try to say, you know, you have to do this and that and the other thing in order to um, take refuge in Jesus, in order to have salvation. And in another word is called, or another phrase is called born again. So basically anybody who has not chosen, made the choice of being with Lord Jesus Christ, um, like, Basically, everybody is a zombie. Everybody is um, a supernatural or spiritual abortion because we we are born in the spirit when we choose um, to take refuge in Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, and and the thing is, like this reality, reality, like okay, we know there's the law, uh, and the thing is, the law transcends transcends the material world. There's a legal system in the supernatural world there's a legal system in the energetic world and i know that's like a new idea and i've just been learning about it maybe the past year or so and trying to figure out how to articulate it and i do plan to have a book um to write a book about what i know just to make it accessible to um to, to um just beginners so, so, so that is why it's important for us to make a, a choice and also realize that um, the reason why their supernatural warfare is allowed against us is because it is legal. So Satan is about the law. Like if you look at the Old Testament, they talk about the law and Lord Jesus Christ saves us from the law. So the law is the material world. It's the unsaved world. It's the, the world outside of Lord Jesus Christ. And I know um, a lot of this information and names are, it is it can be uh, difficult to hear. It was for me, um, and it's even still kind of hard to, to say, but I do feel like it's really important because there's so much distress in our culture today, uh, a lot of alienation, a lot of like, families against families, you know, and friend against friend, um, just with what, what's been going on politically. And uh, so I feel like we need all the help we can get and that we need it as soon as possible. So, uh, and, and so you may encounter Christians who are like, you have to say this particular prayer, and you have to, you know, believe these particular things, and you have to get baptized in a whole lot of water or whatever. And what the Bible says is you are saved. You are saved by the grace of God. So, you know, nothing you can do can save you. Um, it's like Almighty, Almighty God has chosen you. Almighty God, if you're sitting here even considering what I'm saying, Almighty God has selected you. You are chosen by Him to even have 
uh, the slightest interest in what I'm saying. So um, nothing you can do, no ritual you can do would, will save you. And I think it's just more of a, maybe, the, I don't know, maybe there's some reason, good reason why Christians have this whole complicated thing. But what I keep on saying is that, you know, it's important to know that um, Jesus was born of a, of a woman um, and he was a man and that he died and he was resurrected. And so, um, and, and, I, and perhaps it is, you know, that uh, he lived the sinless life and therefore he, he paid the price for our sins because every, every uh, action has a consequence. Every action has a reaction, I guess you could say. And so when people do evil, there's a price to be paid. And um, so when somebody sins, the wage is death. The, the payment you have to make is death. So because Jesus lived a sinless life, he didn't have to pay any debt. He didn't have to pay for any sin of his own. And he decided to take a bullet for all of us. And so we could have the opportunity of eternal life. So um, so he paid for our sins by sacrificing himself. So so, so that's, that's in a nutshell as far as I understand it. And, um, and so when you decide to participate in the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, our almighty God, Holy Spirit, you are a new creation. You are, you are what you might have heard is the term called born again. It means you're born in the spirit. So you have like, I guess what's called the old man, like the old body, materialistic, earthly, you know, body. And then you have the new man, uh, which is your new body in Christ. Um, your born again uh, body, and so, um, so, uh, and um, so, and and also, um, the Holy Spirit lives within you. So Christ lives within you, and that's in Galatians two twenty. And because uh, you have. Because Christ is living within you, because you chose to take refuge in Lord Jesus Christ, um, uh, you, uh, you, your, your body has died to the power of sins rule over you. So the the the, um, the law does not apply to your supernatural body, to your your reborn body. And that's Romans 6, 1, 7, 6, 6, 2, uh, 6, 1 to 7. So like I was saying, when you are born again, then your new body, your new soul is outside of the law. So that's what that one's about. And you have been given the mind of Christ. Of course, you know, we're not, um, we're not quite you know, there, but um, the Holy Spirit, we are a temple of God. We are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's, uh, and so the, so we have the opportunity to have the mind of Christ. And that's 1 Corinthians 2.16. And Christ himself is in you, Colossians 1.27. You've been forgiven of all of your sins. The debt of sin uh, against you has been canceled. And that's Colossians 2.10. Oh, wait, no, it's Colossians one. 13, 14. So, <clears throat> so you are a new person. Uh, and um, you have been, you have already been made complete in Christ. Colossians 2.10. Which is pretty amazing. Like, I mean, and, and that's what I kind of realized is the whole point of life is to be born again. Uh, and to then share this information with other people. Because a lot, like most of my friends don't think evil is real. Most of my friends don't think Lord Jesus Christ is real. Most of my friends don't think that it, this is an essential choice to make. And um, I mean, to, to be made complete in Christ, like to be finally complete, that just uh, is a, sounds great to me. You've been, a been given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline to Timothy 1, 7. So, with all of that is basically that you are a new creation 
when you join with Lord Jesus Christ, then um, you are accepted. You are God's child, John 1, 2. You are Christ's friend, John 15, 15. You are united with Christ and one with him in spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. You've been <clears throat> bought with a price. You've been bought with a price. You belong to God, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 20. So when you hear people say, Christ is my redeemer, that's what they're saying. Lord Jesus Christ paid for you. No matter what you've done, you know, you have been redeemed. You know, just like a coupon, you redeem a coupon at the grocery store. But you are much more valuable, of course. And Almighty God felt that to be, safe, felt, felt that to be so. You are a member of Christ's body, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You are holy and blameless, Ephesians 1, 4. You are adopted as God's child, Ephesians 1, 7. You have direct access to God through the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 2, 10. You may approach God with freedom and confidence, Ephesians 6, 3, 12. So that's just you're accepted as a child of God. You are secure. You are free forever from condemnations, Romans 8, 1. You can... You can be assured that all things in your life will work together for good, Romans 8, 28. You can never be separated from the love of God, Romans 8, 35 to 39. You are hidden with Christ and God, Colossians 3, 3. And I feel that that's important. Um, there's a lot of prayers are, are enough where it talks about um, hiding, like asking God to hide us from um, those who are attacking us, like, uh, the supernatural warfare. So, um, and that's why I like the phrase like taking refuge in God. The good work that God has begun in you will be completed. Philippians 1 6. You are a citizen of heaven. Philippians 3 20. You will find grace and mercy in time of need. Hebrews 4 16. You, um, you are born of God and the evil one cannot touch you. 1 John 5 18. So, there's this other. Um, called um, where it says you you know explains you are significant you were intentional so no matter what you feel and I feel this way myself like I, I feel disposable a lot of the time but um, somebody pointed out you know that like you are intentional you were made on purpose no matter what you may think no matter how people have, might have treated you you are intentional God wanted you to be the way you are first be good to yourself and other, you know as good as you can to others you are significant you are the salt and the light of the earth matthew 5 13 16. you are a branch of the true vine a channel of his life john 5 15 5 you have been chosen and appointed to bear fruit john 15 16 you are a personal witness of christ acts 1 10 you are god's temple 1 Corinthians 3.16, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm, Ephesians 2.6. You are God's work of art created to do good works, Ephesians 2.10. You, you can do all things to Christ who will give you strength, Philippians 4.13. So, and this is from, um, it was adapted from a book called uh, um, Living Free in Christ and Victory. Over the Darkness by Neil Anderson, and that's A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. So I just really liked that um, that, that um, selection uh, because it's it's not a whole whole lot of not a whole lot of people have gone over that, and um, and that's uh, so. And and when you hear uh, talk uh, when like. Um, talking about the, the gospel. The gospel means the good news. And the good news is that um, we have been redeemed. We have sa been saved um, from the, from the uh, supernatural warfare I mean, that, that we may be experiencing right now or that um, in eternal life without God, we're saved from that as well. And this is not to say that life is not going to be hard, um, especially if you've been really far away from um, from God, from Lord Jesus Christ, um, that you, you might actually experience a lot more um, challenges. Uh, just in listening to this video, you might find that there's a lot of distractions, your nose is itching, some of you being really loud, 
you've got to run to the bathroom or something like that, like there's going to be a lot of distractions um, because every soul is really valuable um, to both both parties, um, to Almighty God and to the adversary. And, you know, even, even the people that I find very difficult and stuff, I mean, I want God to win. So I, 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 um, so it's good for us to, um, you know, pray for everybody to, to get this information. And, um, another quote I like from the Bible is, uh, his burden, his, his burden is light and his yoke is easy. And I want to bring it back to that whole thing about salvation. Like Christians make this whole, like seems make this whole ritual very complicated about salvation. <clears throat> but um, the Bible says uh, his burden is light and his yoke is easy. So uh, it's just consenting to God saving you. <laughs> and I guess we can't, we're in such a culture of, um, you know, unworthiness and maybe greed or inferiority. I don't know what it is, but uh, it seems like people create uh, difficult, like put hurdles when there's no hurdles to, to be had for salvation. It's like um, our eternity is more important than anything else more important than paying your rent it's more important honestly than you know your kids ballet class or whatever i mean your eternity the soul your soul's eternity is more important than anything else really you know eternity is a long time so um so i got distracted but um, I, I just want to put that out there and uh, you're worth it and the evidence is out there. Uh, I understand if uh, I, I was trained, I mean, for, for, you know, all of my life, I didn't believe that there was such a thing as evil and I didn't really realize how, what um, a valuable, almost like a front page news that the Bible is. Uh, pretty much the Bible is talking about what's happening today as of November uh, 2019. There's a lot that seems to be coming to pass uh, quite rapidly. And that's another reason why I'm bringing this up because uh, anything can happen. And, uh, you know, we, we, we ha we're have we blessed by the internet and um, technology and getting information out there. So I hope you take a look do some uh, research, use your critical thinking. And also, I highly recommend taking a look at the last book of the Bible. It's called Revelation. And it, there, a lot of what's been um, kind of um, unfolding the past uh, few decades is, it seems, and it seems to be kind of going quicker now, um, but it's in, it's in those pages. And also, like, what seems to be going on now seems to be in, um, just throughout the book, uh, I just feel like oh, whenever I'm turning to a portion of it, it seems to be talking about today. So anyways, um, find me on Facebook at my post-traumatic growth or post-traumatic growth. And you can find me also on my YouTube channel, my post-traumatic growth. And I have a wise stamp page called my post-traumatic growth. And I am in the process of getting a new website built. Um, and uh, so I'll probably be doing some rebranding at that point, but um, so I, and I'll be, I'm planning to be doing my next uh, show from the East Coast, and um, that'll probably be my final show. Uh, and yeah, so thank you so much for watching, and keep a lookout for uh, my next show, Wednesday, 530, uh, the third Wednesday of December. So thanks for watching.